Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, very nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Wen Qing Yan. So the, uh, my background is uh, rather uh, in industry setting. So uh, my, uh, the lab uh, that I'm focused on is basically the inflammation and also the some kind of a you know, oncology uh, aspect. So today I know this meeting is uh, uh, vaccines and infectious disease focus. So inflammation in immunology uh, is one of the components. So the title of my talk is uh, the host just introduced is regarding uh, the animal model and the translational animal model uh, development and optimization uh, for the, uh, uh, basically for the multiple uh, sclerosis uh, research. So uh, with uh, uh, some uh, uh, background uh, in, uh, research uh, work that we we, we done, we, we realized there are some kind of a, um, a gap between the uh, the, uh, the translation models and the optimization, which suit to the uh, 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 the clinical sites uh, for the uh, drug development. So. Um, uh, I'm uh, basically an employee of the uh, Cambridge Biotech. That's my sort of a disclosure. So as I'm, I, immunology is such a discipline that basically covered uh, from head to toe and uh, uh, it's kind of a, a huge network. And uh, as, as it's, it's you know, more and more and work with immunology and then I, and then I Think of uh, the Starlink, which is a kind of global view of the uh, of the of the interactions in, in interaction with, uh, among I mean among the world. So I this is kind of a metaphor and a thought. And immunology basically is uh, is too broad to 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 be kind of uh, excluded to any part of the body, uh, similar to the internet coverage. So the autoimmune disease. This is an unmet uh, need uh, in medical market. So uh, as, as we all know that, so the, uh, 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 from the, uh, the head to toe, right? So the uh, arthritis and, and, and the IBD, all those uh, are different types of autoimmune, uh, autoimmune dis disorders basically is the devastating uh, disorders basically impact the, uh, uh, it's, it's huge. So the way to, uh, uh, to mitigate the disease and uh, the, uh, the proper use of animal models might be some kind of a, uh, uh, work that we, we need to uh, focus on more. So uh, these are just basically listed the, uh, the 10 most common autoimmune diseases. And some kind of, uh, sorry, and some uh, form of potential intervention uh, is uh, listed here. So the multiple sclerosis basically is a secondary, as the second uh, most common uh, uh, autoimmune diseases. So like. Let me just, uh, as a, we all know that the MS is the impact to uh, major uh, systems, basically characterized by the uh, demyelination of the, the central nervous system, and also the impact on the immune uh, system. So most common, this most common cause of neurological dysfunction, and this, this disease features a very long uh, course. It's a very high uh, disability rate. Uh, also, the interesting the prevalence prevalence of this disease is 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 varies basically between countries, the areas areas, and then interestingly is uh, higher. Um, incidents in the Western countries and, and the countries and areas with high uh, latitude. So uh, uh, as a progression of the disease, basically there are 
uh, three uh, uh, stages of the disease. The pre symptomatic, uh, symptomatic, uh, relapsing, and, and the secondary progressive phases. There are three phases. And each phase has its own unique uh, 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 phenotypic uh, uh, findings. Sorry. How come this is we're moving on? So, for example, the most patients basically develop, develop from the clinically uh, isolated syndromes called CIS and to uh, relapse and remitting MS. And then over time, the disease can progress to uh, secondary uh, progressive MS. So, uh, so this is the basically is a, uh, the, uh, kind of a time course for uh, uh, both uh, inflammatory and also neurological changes uh, through the uh, disease progression. So, uh, uh, in terms of a neuropathology of the of the disease. So the major uh, uh, the feature is basically the uh, demyelination and neurodegeneration, uh, as we show here, as basically a majorly uh, impact on the spinal cord and the white uh, matter of the brain. Um, how come this is automatically going? Oh, okay. So um, this is uh, uh, also uh, in some cases with uh, axonal loss uh, in the in the brain and also in the in the, in the spinal cord. So in, uh, on the other hand, in the immuno uh, uh, physiology side of the disease, so there are basically two uh, uh, point of view. Uh, in traditional views, uh, people believe that they're majorly uh, mainly T cell mediated. Now, I think uh, uh, more and more researchers believe that uh, this, uh, includes interactions and network be between the TADD and the myeloid cells in the periphery and, and also the CNS. Uh, and also this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, inflammatory uh, reaction actually also is progressive from early disease to late disease has become more complicated and more devastating. So this is the, uh, showing that the immuno uh, uh, physiological uh, uh, side of the, the disease. Then uh, uh, now uh, there are uh, a few uh, basically are promising and encouraging uh, drug targets being uh, discovered or identified. And there are some uh, uh, drugs already being, uh, being developed to uh, interfere with disease. So then uh, my, uh, my work is gonna be uh, focused on the animal models and how to uh, kind of choose the uh, appropriate animal models and uh, to uh, uh, recapitulate the, this, this disease. So uh, here is the brief uh, historical uh, time course of the animal model for uh, MS. So you can see it was as early as the 1800s that people used the rabies vaccination to, to kind of uh, mimic the disease. Of course, it is a very primitive. So then the, uh, there are some, uh, through uh, many, many years of uh, development, there are some kind of uh, milestones. For example, uh, the ad adoptive transfer EAE uh, model has been developed uh, actually or, uh, or initiated in the 1960s. Then the active EAE induced model with, with MOG actually introduced uh, in the uh, late uh, 90s. So uh, talk about animal models, there are three categories of uh, MS animal modeling. Uh, so they are uh, unique and, and, and different. And, and they have, uh, each model has its, uh, each ca category of the model that has its uh, or uh, pros and cons. For example, 
Uh, so we have three, basically EAE and virus-induced and toxin-induced model. And each model has its own uh, strength or uh, and limitations. For example, the toxin-induced model, it's, uh, uh, it's, a, uh, it's drawback is that uh, it does not really uh, recapitulate the uh, MS uh, patients because in the animal model, uh, has you know viral uh, um, uh, uh, yeah. in the animal model does not have immune activity, uh, but in, in the in the real patients, an inflammatory immune response is, is huge. So, so for for example, the viral induced model also has its own limitations because in the MS patients usually uh, is absence of uh, viral infection. And my slides are for some reason always moving forward automatically. I'm sorry. So I, I didn't touch anything. So um, uh, the EAE model, on the other hand, is relatively, I think, uh, uh, I mean, it's, no model is perfect, but relatively uh, high on the capitulation of the, of the disease. It has autoimmunity and the neuroinflammation and the neurodegeneration uh, components in it. So uh, uh, my presentation will kind of focus on the uh, EAE model optimization or uh, model selection. So EAE model uh, basically is the major uh, workhorse uh, in the MS research. Uh, so this, is, this graph, basically our lab, we analyzed the uh, animal papers that involved animal, I mean, uh, MS animal models. Then we did a little bit uh, uh, calculation and uh, on it. We found that uh, up to August 2022, 20, uh, so basically 87% of the, of the work actually done using the EAE model. So, so other three uh, uh, types basically is, is pretty minor. Uh, Uh, so the uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, so EAE uh, models have been applied in many uh, drug development. Uh, some of the drugs are already being uh, approved. Uh, so this table basically I copied from a review of papers. So the, uh, a majority of the uh, drugs, the, 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 for, for example, the fingal mold and and also the rituximab. So those those basically. Uh, uh, all of them uh, use the uh, EAE model when uh, developing the drug or evaluate the, the, the molecules. Of course, uh, so not one model is perfect. There are still some kind of uh, um, inconsistency between the model and the uh, MS patients, but the uh, EAE model, I think, is uh, be accepted uh, in, in, in the industry as a tool. Uh, so uh, for for year year model uh, development, so usually um, uh, uh, people use three laboratory uh, methodologies. One is the uh, active EAE uh, and the adoptive transfer EAE, uh, also the uh, genetically uh, modified uh, uh, technology, which uh, lead to uh, spontaneous EAE. So, um, so the active EAE basically, um, uh, people use the uh, uh, the myelin peptides or MOG or POP to basically use as a, a neuroimmunology to 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 immunize the animal to to generate the model. So, active EAE basically based on the uh, myelin reactive TH1 cells or other types of cells to transfer into the animal to, to cause the disease. So uh, the, uh, uh, for my, my, my work is gonna be focused on the active EAE. Uh, so um, the, the, the induced by uh, basically minor immunogens. So currently there are uh, uh, 
two types of uh, immunogens can be used. One is the MOG um, uh, 35 to 55 peptides. Another one is the, uh, the MOG uh, 125, basically the long uh, uh, protein or short peptides. So, uh, but now uh, people basically use uh, either of these models, um, uh, somewhat uh, arbitrarily or like user like, uh, investigators' uh, preference. So how to uh, basically uh, 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 rationalize the animal use between this, uh, these two kind of uh, techniques. So this is the work that uh, we think that's important. So uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, so, so uh, now in the field, basically more and more people are using this uh, mock-induced uh, animal model, but uh, uh, kind of a, uh, uh, there's no uh, scientific uh, uh, support uh, to basically help you as an investigator to choose which model to use when, you know, or what scenario uh, can be used. So uh, we think that we hypothesize that the uh, immunologic, immunological and the, and the neurological characteristics induced by either, either of these uh, 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 mol uh, molecules could be very different. So which can lead to a uh, uh, very distinct pharmacological response uh, uh, to the MS drugs. Uh, so uh, basically, we designed the, uh, 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 the, the, the the project. And basically, systematically compare um, uh, uh, a few uh, uh, MS drugs uh, using uh, you know, these two models that developed by the uh, Mod thirty five or Mod one twenty five. And we hope that this result can help uh, uh, better understand the, uh, or the model when actually do the drug discovery or translational research. So here's the uh, uh, study design. And as I mentioned earlier that we basically uh, uh, use the uh, um, uh, C57 uh, animals and we uh, uh, dose with uh, potassium toxin first, and then uh, then we uh, uh, immunize with the uh, two different types of uh, uh, peptide or protein, uh, mark two thirty five or mark one thirty five, and then uh, we uh, treat with the, uh, the drugs that we uh, choose uh, from the from the market, and we uh, evaluate the efficacy and also the uh, from called dynamic markers, uh, as I, I'll show you uh, later, and uh, see if anything uh, different. So these are the five uh, uh, therapeutic agents uh, that we used to uh, to study the model. Um, so five different drugs. There are basically three different categories. One is the uh, Drug that uh, target on the, uh, the T cell, another one is targeted on the B cell, and another one is targeted on the both T and B. For example, fungal mode, fungal mode is targeted on the T and B, and uh, the squish map is the, the T uh, uh, targeting drug, and the PIN, and the uh, map and also the RC18. So they are the of all uh, B cell targeting drug, including the BTK inhibitors. So all those drugs is being uh, either approved or uh, in a late state development. So the, now I'm gonna show you some of the data. Uh, so, uh, so when we actually use the, uh, the short um, peptide MOG35 uh, induced model, and we found that the uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the the drug that the uh, target on the T cell actually has the best efficacy, and and then other hand, then the, uh, the B cell targeting drug is doesn't does not uh, 
affect the disease or even like make the disease a little worse. And uh, so I'll, uh, this is the uh, distinct uh, 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 efficacy. So when we look at the uh, PD markers and the, and the spinal cord is a uh, histology or uh, demination. And we found that this uh, uh, PD modulation is consistent with the uh, efficacy. So the uh, uh, basically T cell uh, targeting drug has the best uh, PD marker modulation. Uh, uh, why the uh, the B, B cell basically well, why the uh, the in the um, uh, uh, the B cell uh, targeting drug does not uh, uh, change the BD marker. So then we move on to the uh, MOG-135 induced animal model. So basically it's different uh, story. So basically um, uh, targeting drugs, uh, they have uh, a good efficacy. Uh, I'm showing here is a finger more they have a uh, protein dip. So they both have very significant anti-MS response. So then we are uh, trying to uh, understand, uh, uh, we look at the, uh, both T cell and the B cell uh, 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 activation in this uh, model. In this, uh, uh, then we found that uh, as expected, uh, both T and the B cell uh, uh, activated in this model. And then when we look at the, I, I did not show here, when we look at the, the model of, uh, induced by Mark 35, we did not see uh, uh, B cell uh, the, at all. So uh, then we um, uh, move on to uh, different types of model, but still the, uh, um, the uh, still the uh, MOG-125 induced the EAE, but uh, this model basically generated on uh, top of the, uh, the, the genetically uh, modified uh, L17 uh, transgenic mice. And then basically this similar results, uh, whereas the, uh, the, the T drug has a dramatic response, but the, uh, the uh, 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 Sorry, so the both T and B uh, uh, modulated drug has a very good response in this model. So then we uh, again we look at the uh, uh, the homodynamic markers and to show that uh, as uh, uh, is consistent with the efficacy data from previous study, and then the both T and B cell modulating drugs. Uh, scrutiny map and uh, and the telecyc uh, uh, showed the very good therapeutic response on this uh, uh, 125 induced uh, EAE model. Um, then, well, uh, then we did more work on the uh, inflammatory uh, uh, side of the disease, and we found that the TLB cells or uh, heavily uh, infiltrated in spinal cord of the uh, the model 125 induced the EAE model, and uh, uh, when we look at the uh, um, uh, model that induced by Mark 35, it's totally different because there's no B cell infiltration. So they we. Um, then we uh, look at the uh, more drug. We basically uh, uh, compare the uh, uh, anti-CD20 antibody, which is B cell uh, blocking antibody, and basically we, we found the, uh, similar results as totally agree with our uh, uh, previous findings. So um, this, is, this is interesting. Then we look at the, uh, uh, we did the literature search. We tried to uh, see that if these results actually correlate with clinical observation from the, uh, from the um, uh, literature. 
And indeed, we found that more or less, uh, they are kind of uh, in line with each other. Uh, for example, then the rituxin map and the uh, scotch map and the finger map mode, they all, they have, uh, they target the different, uh, uh, different immune cells, uh, but they kind of uh, in line with the uh, outcome, our data is in line with the outcome uh, from the, from the clinical uh, study. And uh, uh, with one exception that uh, uh, in the squish map, so the, the in, uh, we did not test the, the uh, mock 35 models, uh, but uh, other than that, uh, the rest of the uh, data is consist uh, consistent with the clinical uh, uh, results. So uh, uh, we all know that the, uh, the MS model, I think uh, prob probably true for any kind of animal model. Uh, there are some inconsistency and uh, in compare with the, uh, the uh, human disease. So uh, for MS research, uh, some people basically recommend that we do the reverse translation. Basically, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, when the drug uh, fa fail or succeed, so then we 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 go back to the uh, basic uh, science or translational lab again to uh, re kind of optimize or re uh, develop the model and to 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 to, to, to modify the model to really uh, 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 find the uh, the trick to to to. To uh, to improve the animal model, I think this is our work to some some extent somehow practice the reverse translation, and we we hope that this this is a uh, better uh, understanding when we choose the uh, animal model depends on the uh, the drug target uh, that the drug is basically intended to be used or in based on the scenarios. So um, I think to kind of uh, conclude, then I think it's our, our major findings that we we uh, we systemically uh, studied uh, uh, pharmacologic and the immunological and neurological uh, changes uh, animal EAE models developed by two different types of uh, uh, immuno immunogenes, and we found they are, they they have different very different. Uh, 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 profiles in terms of uh, um, pharmacological response and also uh, in terms of pharmacodynamic uh, uh, response. The Mark 35 peptide induced EAE models only respond to T cell modulated drugs. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, Mark 125 induced the models basically uh, respond to both. T cell and B cell modulated drugs. Um, so um, both T and B cell con contribute to the initiation and progression of the uh, of the uh, EAE model, um, uh, but the B cells are not involved in pathologic mechanism at the early stage of the peptide induced of the uh, MOG thirty five peptide induced EAE model. Uh, of course, the, uh, the the detailed MOA and the, uh, the still uh, need to be uh, investigated more. So we hope that the results uh, can help uh, to provide better understanding of the MOG induced EAE models and could serve as a general guidance for MS animal model selection. So I think that's all I uh, have for for this. Uh, for this short uh, work. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the, the researchers, the people in uh, my lab and the previous lab, uh, Dr. Uh, Yan, uh, Dr. Zhao, and uh, Dr. Tang. So um, uh, thank them for the uh, great help. And thank you for all the attention. I'd like to stop here for any questions.